today on Direction for Life. Stop going around singing, I don't need anybody else. That's not true. All of you are in here today in one way or another because of somebody else. Whether it's me, your wife, your brother, your sister, somebody else in some kind of way had something to do with you even being here right now. First of all, being in the earth and even being here in this church, whatever job you had, somebody helped you along the way. Hello, I'm Herbert Bailey, and thanks for joining us again today for the Direction for Life broadcast. On today's broadcast, I'm going back into a message entitled, Tapping into the Money Flow. You know, there is no shortage of money. I don't care what's going on in the economy. I don't care what's going on with the Democrats or the Republicans. God promised us that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It's a matter of using our faith and tapping into the money flow and working the principles of God so that we never lack. I pray that this message blesses you today, tapping into the money flow. You must learn to make friends. I mean, get a little more detail. You need to get some money friends. Touch your neighbor say, I need some money friends. <laughs> now ask them, tell them how much you got, how much you ask them, how much you got, how much you got. I need to, I need to know if I even need to be sitting next to you. I just can't be surrounded by broke folks all my life. Okay. You need to, now, now, let me show you some scripture, and then I'll talk more about it. Luke 16 and 9. Well, let me give you the context. Luke 16, the context is the man is working. He's a steward, a manager. He works for the owner of the company. The owner of the company said, listen, I'm coming through town. I need to check the books and check the cash register, make sure all the money is there. And the man knew that he had been squandering the money. He had not been doing what was right with the money. So he quickly had to raise capital. So he goes to the one, to all of the debtors of the owner and says, how much you owe the master? The man said, 100. I owe him 100 gr uh, uh, grain of wheat. He said, well, give, give, give me 50. He went to somebody, how much you owe? He said, I owe 100. Give him right quickly, right out of check, sell it for 80. He went out settling debts to raise capital. And then let, let, let's pick it up here um, in verse, what, verse 7. Luke 16, round verse 7. Let's see what that says. Okay. Uh, go on to verse 8. I explain. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Unjust, y'all think, you see unjust? Unjust means not right. Unjust means wrong. Unjust means unjustifiable. Unjust means he was, he was a little bit shady. He said, and the Lord, now I want you to see here, get this clear, the Lord there is not a capital L. That's a little L. It means the owner who he worked for. You, you follow me? The Lord, the, his boss, commended the unjust to it because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, there's another part of this I forgot to explain to you, okay? Uh, Back up to the, 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 the part where he says, when, the, when man said, he says, give an account of thy stewardship, for thou may no longer be my steward. Okay? What's that? that starts off the chapter. You all with me here? Okay? And here we go. Verse 3. So the man said, I'm coming through. I need to count my money. See how you're handling books. Because if, stuff, if I don't have my stuff, you're about to be fired. And the steward said, the employee said, watch this. What shall I do for my Lord taketh away from me my stewardship? I'm about to lose my job. And then he said, I cannot dig. He said, I'm a white collar worker. I'm an accountant. I'm a manager. I'm a work. I'm a, I cannot dig. I can't dig no ditches. He said, he said I'm, a, I'm an educated employee. I don't want to work in a factory. I, I can't do la manual labor. And then he said, and, I'm, and, to, and to, use, to, to play a word on the temptation, and I'm too proud to beg. Y'all see that? He said, I'm ashamed to beg. He said, so what am I going to, so he, he was shrewd, and he saw the handwriting on the wall. He said, I'm about to lose my job. So watch this. He worked out a strategy, not so he didn't lose his job. I didn't really get this till this morning. I've been teaching on this for years, but I didn't really get it till this morning. He worked out a strategy not to keep his job. Eventually, it's going to be found out. 
that the one who owed him $100 only paid him 50 Now, he may have raised the money right now, but eventually when you have an audit, something's going to be showing up as missing here. He worked out a strategy and built relationships by helping these people who owed that man money. He worked out favor with them. And that's the point that Jesus makes from Luke 16, 8 and 9. He said, now see what he did? He said, the children of this world in their generation are wiser than the children of light. He said, you got to learn how to network. You have to learn to build relationships. Watch this. You have to learn how to get people to like you. Okay? Now, look at this. And then he says this, verse 9. So, here's the main point I'm trying to get you to say, to understand, Jesus says, make to yourself friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. Make financial friends. Use your money, use your influence, use your ability to help somebody else because you might need some help one day. Make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail, meaning you don't have everything you need, or when your your personal economy changes, they, the people you have helped, may receive you into everlasting habitation. The New Living Translation makes it even clearer. It says, here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to to an internal home. The Amplified says this, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, deceitful riches, money, possession, so that when it fails, when money fails, that's why the Bible says you can't trust in money. Money can be here today and gone tomorrow. You can have money where you think coming out your ears for today and you can get sick tomorrow and have to spend every dime you got. So when it fails, those you have favored may receive and welcome you into everlasting habitation. This was not about the man just trying to fool the owner. This was about building relationships. This is so important because a lot of people miss this. And Jesus says this, that the children of this world are wiser in their day than the children even sometimes of light on the kingdom of God because we're so spiritual. Okay, let me show you how spiritual we are. We come up with songs that says, long, 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 long as I got King Jesus, don't need nobody else. That ain't true. Jesus said, you need some friends. Stop going around singing, I don't need anybody else. That's not true. All of you are in here today in one way or another because of somebody else. Whether it's me, your wife, your brother, your sister, somebody else in some kind of way had something to do with you even being here right now. First of all, being in the earth and even being here in this church, whatever job you had, somebody helped you along the way. Anybody who does, and let me tell you this, anybody who does not recognize the people that have helped you along the way, you are either ignorant, you, you, you're, you're either ignorant, you're either just, just forgetful, or you're just unwise. Somebody has helped you to get where you are. Amen. Whenever I hear people say stuff like, I done pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, you lying. Somebody helped you with the boots, somebody gave you the strap, God gave you the strength to pull up the boots. Oh, you hear me? Somebody had to make the boots, somebody gave you the boots, somebody had to sell you the boots. There's, and so, that's why I'm, I'm always boasting in the Lord that I am a God-made man. Glory to God. I'm not a self-made man. I'm a God-made man. It's in him that I live and that I move and that I have my being. So, Jesus said, you got to understand, you need some relationships and you need friends and you need some money, friends, and you need to use your money to make friends or watch this or whatever you have Use it to benefit somebody else because you're going to need somebody to use what they have to benefit you. Okay, y'all don't believe that? Mom and grandmama said it this way. Be careful how you treat people going up. Why? Because you might meet the same people coming down. Heard somebody say this one time. uh, uh, John Maxwell says this. He said, the only reason why you is lonely, people say, well, you know, lonely at the top. Only reason why lonely at the top is you didn't take anybody with you. 
as you're going up, take somebody else with you. Somebody else asked this question. It's a leadership book called, Who's Holding Your Ladder? There, there's, there's some ladders, come on now. I mean, you, you, you can get on a, you can get on a six-foot ladder by yourself. When you, when, when you, you get on a 12-foot ladder, you want somebody, come on now, you want somebody holding that ladder. You need somebody holding your ladder that you can trust. You need somebody to help you on your way up, and then you need to help other people. So every relation, this is what I discovered. A couple years ago, I was going through something. I was trying to figure out what was going on. I was... It, Trying, I was in my feelings a little bit, and I was trying to make sure I wasn't making decisions based upon my feelings. So I had to evaluate relationships, evaluate what I was doing, evaluate who was in my life, evaluate the proximity of people, people in my life, evaluate who I was cutting off, who going to say, who who, who going to connect with, and all these things. And I came to this conclusion, say this with me, say every relationship should be a relationship of, of reciprocity. That means every relationship is, that's the intellectual way of saying it. Every relationship, you ought to be giving something and receiving something. Because if all you do is give, and the person you're in relationship with never gives back to you, that's just a sucker. Are you ready to have kingdom impact? Get ready to walk in a new level of authority at the 2018 Direction for Life Conference at Right Direction Church International. Join host Bishop Herbert Bailey. You got to get it settled that God loves me too much to let me go out like this, to let me go down like this. God will reverse this situation. I don't know what, I don't know how, I don't know when, but God will do something. Dr. Marsha Bailey. God says, hear me now. He said, I don't need all year to do this. We understand this regarding the rapture in a minute, in a twinkling of an eye. That's what God says. In a minute, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, I'm going to change your status of life. And guest speakers, Dr. Bill Winston. And I'm telling you, you have come here to be equipped that God's giving you spiritual knowledge that you'll be able to fulfill whatever area you're working in in the marketplace. Pastor Ty Tribbett. He will never ask you to use something that he doesn't plan on filling. And to fill means to satisfy completely. So God, if he asks for your heart, give it to him. He's going to fill it. If he asks for your bank account, give it to him. He's going to fill it. If he asks for your mind, give it to him. He's going to fill it. If he asks for your relationship, give it to him. He's going to satisfy you. And Pastor Michael Todd. Some of y'all have had the wrong perspective. You thought that what was happening was to take you out. And God says, what's happening is I'm making you right now. And I can't allow everybody to see it. Because if they saw it, they try to put you, pull you up and put you in a pot. But God said, what I'm building in you, it's going to be something that goes deep. And that when it is time, it's going to go high. Musical guests include Shanna Wilson-Williams and Todd Galberth. It's all about Kingdom Impact, November 7th through 9th, 12 noon and 7 p.m. at Right Direction Church International. For more info or to register, visit directionforlife.info or call 877-798-5433. Now, everybody is not going to give you money. There's some relationships I have that ain't about money. Amen? I mean, there, there, there's sometimes there, there, uh, everybody ain't going to be able to pick up the tab. Everybody ain't going to pay the but, but there's some people who can just give you, every time you're with them, man, I, they just make me laugh. And y'all got some friends that make you laugh. They just as broke as... Uh, <laughs> but they make you laugh. You, you know you're always going to have to pay. They always going through some... But man, when I, when I talk to them, when I get with them, man, they just make me feel good. They just, they just make me laugh. They make me feel at peace. You know, I, I, can just, I can just be myself, whatever the case may be. And then they're giving you something if there's no more than peace. On the other hand, any of y'all got friends or so-called friends or associates, when they call you like, listen, I, I, I ain't even answering that call. I don't have time for that today. You, you don't even know what it's about, but you know it's going to be some drama. They either, gonna, they either want something, they need something. Somebody, somebody texted me this week, and without even looking, I told Pastor Mars, I said, they said they want something from me. It was talking about high pastor. It, it all said high pastor. I'm like, no, they, they, they don't give me no high pastor. They give me a high pastor, can you? Hi, pastor, I need. Hi, pastor, can you help me out? This ain't just a hi, pastor. Oh, some of y'all like, I ain't going to never take that and say hi, pastor. <laughs> Hello, man of God. Grace and peace be unto you, most holy father. Okay. 
Come on, any of y'all got people when, when, they, when they call you like, I just don't have time. You know it's going to be drama. You know in some type of way it's going to be emotionally draining. Yeah. Amen. One, one time Pastor Marsh and I, we went, on, we went on a cruise from South Carolina, and we said we'll never do that again because we were going on a cruise, and sometimes we're on vacation. You know, we ain't got time for no scripture. I, ain't, I don't have time for no, no strife. Okay, and so we, 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 we're on this cruise. We, we happen to leave out of Charleston. First time we've we done several cruises. First time we've been to Charleston. And so, and so we're sitting there. We're we, we sitting here with these people. And, uh, and so somebody else was with it. And they said, uh, they said, 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 what church you go to? They said, you're from, oh, you're from Columbia. I said, what church you go to? They said, Mr. Church. They said, I know who you are. And they had an attitude. <laughs> right direction. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, I'm on a cruise. I ain't having the time. <laughs> Watch this. Okay. At the time, their church that they went to was a small church. It ain't small no more, okay? And so where they were, they said, I've been here, what's all that security? That's all that security. I said, um, I'm on a crew. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't here to defend nothing. I ain't here to fight with nobody. You know, I, I just don't have, I said, God bless you. I said, you don't ever have to come the right direction. See ya, deuces. Come, you ever not have time for the drama? And some people are always trying to bring into drama. They always got some sad story. Uh, oh, and, oh, man, I don't mean y'all going to get mad at me now. And, and some of this stuff, I just call it ghetto drama. If you just come up a little bit to another class, you realize some of that stuff you talk, and, and, and she talking this, and she said this, here, and I said, hey, and I, I ain't loaning you no father. Less than I loan you father. I'm like, you, you, all this drama about somebody who owe you $5, is that where your life is stuck at? And you all know what I'm talking about. And so uh, eventually you're going to have to realize, I need people around me that can add something to my life. I add to your life, you add to my life. Every relationship, so I, I, I'm going to challenge you this week, ask people, no, no, not ask people, ask yourself, what am I getting out of this relationship? What does this person do for me? And I, I tweeted this last, and I said this last week. It doesn't mean that you have to end every relationship. You just may, may, may need to change the proximity of the relationships. So, some people, just, they're just too close to you. You talk to them too much. You're spending too much time with them. They're in your ear too much. I have blood relatives like that. Come on, any of y'all got blood relationship? You, all the time you see them is at the family reunion every other year, and that's enough. <laughs> Amen. You see them at a wedding. You see them at a funeral. You see them at a, at a family event. But no, I don't, we don't need to see, be around each other every week. You always got drama. You, you, you're, just, you're just a parasite. Every relationship should be a relationship of reciprocity. Look at Proverbs 19 and 4. It says, wealth maketh many friends. I want you to see I'm not making this up. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. Nobody wants to be around anybody who only has needs and nothing to supply. Wealth maketh many friends. Jesus said, use your wealth, use your resources, whatever you have to bless some other people. Now, I want you to see this. Some friendships that you make are going to be for the benefit of your children. I'm always trying to get you all to think beyond one generation. I've seen people get mad, fall out with people, and then want to ask for help for their children. The child didn't do anything, but you messed this thing up. Some relationships are for your children. The Bible says that Levi, the, the children, the sons of Levi, received the tithe, are blessed through the tithe. You have to know under Scripture, understand the Old Testament Scripture, that the tithe went to the Levite, and the, and the, uh, and the, and the tithe of the tithe, the heave offering, went to the high priest. And rather, the first, the, first, the first fruit went to the high priest, and the tithe went to the Levite. And, and so the Bible says this in the New Testament, it's in the book of Hebrews, it said the Levites received tithe because Abraham paid tithes. Abraham paid tithe so those who come out of his Lord can receive tithe. What it's really showing us there is that there will be generational blessings as a result of what you do and what you give for your children. I need y'all to think beyond yourselves. 
And, and I'm seeing today, even as a people, as a culture, and, and, and African-American culture, but just American culture, many of us, we just think too much of ourselves. People having children for themselves. The purpose of having a child is because you can give something to a child to help this child be a productive citizen. Not because you, mm, not because you just want to have some pleasure. I'm going to help you all make some better choices. Before you sleep with somebody, make a baby with somebody, let your child that is, not un that is unborn ask you a question. Would I want this person as my daddy? Would I want this person as my mama? When you were dating, you just not, and especially if you're young, because, you know, because some older people, y'all, you know, you, it's ain't about no children. It's about you and your companionship at this point. But especially when you're young, you know, you, you're young, you look to marry somebody, you look to have children. You're not just, you're not just trying to find a lover, somebody to spend time with. You were interviewing your child's father. You hadn't thought about it like that, had you? You're interviewing your child's mother. People say stuff like, after they had a baby with somebody, you know, he ain't worth nothing. D did all of a sudden his value go down? <laughs> or was he never worth anything? And you had a child with him. Don't get mad at me now. I'm trying to help you going forward in the future. We can't change what's been done, but we can make better decisions going forward. I'm not trying to put anybody in condemnation. I'm telling y'all as a people, we got to make better decisions. I'm going to go deeper. Everybody's saying, you know, we got different kind of families today. You got, you got two mothers or two fathers, or you don't have to have a, 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 a companion. You can just go to a sperm bank and just be, get artificially inseminated. Did you ask the child what their preference would be? Did you ask the child, would you prefer to have a mother and a father or two fathers? Did you ask the child, now I know what you like doing and what's pleasurable to your flesh. I ain't dealing with that. I'm dealing with the child. Did you ask the child, what would your preference be? Because what I'm telling y'all, having children is not just about you. It, because long before that child will love you and appreciate you, you got to do a lot for that child. You got to make choices, some choice you're making, even regarding relationships and friends. It's not about you, it's about your children. God wants you to set your children up to be blessed. I I finally started on this book. I started on it this week. I've been, it's been in my spirit for long. Called Moving Your Family Forward. I started outlining it. But one of the ways you move your family forward, you set up things for your children. And now I'm talking about relate. It's not just about you. Some things your children will benefit from. Now watch this. Let me show you this. Okay. Um, look at Proverbs 27.10. Media I added this one. It's not in your notes, so pull it up. Proverbs 27.10. It said, thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in a day of calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Okay, this, this is going to broaden your, thing, your thinking in terms of relationship. People say, long as I just got my family, but your family too far away. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I got my family... What, what does it say? Better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. So you got a brother next door. You got a, you, I mean, you got a neighbor next door, but you got a brother who lives in Washington State. It's going to take him a minute to get here. So maybe you need to be neighborly. You all understand? Maybe you need to look at who's right around you and make some good, healthy relationships. I'm saying this to all you people who say that, you know, I just don't do people. I don't, I, you, you have your people, I just don't do people. Well, you, you don't do people, somebody ain't going to do you. And eventually you're going to need somebody to do you. It, it amazes me, really, even in the church as a pastor. It amazes me. People say, you know what, nobody called me. Nobody came to see about me. You never even say hi to anybody. You're not involved. You come late. You leave early and sit in service like somebody made you come. You don't praise. You don't wave your hand. You look around like, wow, all these crazy people up in here praising and then you wonder why nobody's nice to you and friendly to people. Now, people should be, but how many of y'all know there's some people it takes more effort to be nice to than others? 
We're only human. But the first part I want you to said your own friend and your father's friend. So there's some relationships that your father or your parents have built that you need to be able to maintain, and some relationships you maintain for the sake of your children. Currency in any form is exchanged from one person to another. Money is already flowing throughout the earth. Dr. Herbert Bailey explains how to tap into that flow to get it to you. Order this timely series today. You may also get the MP3 download. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for Tapping Into the Money Flow. Introducing the new RDCI Now app. It's all things right direction, right at your fingertips. Stay up to date on upcoming events. Send in prayer requests and praise reports, online giving, digital and social media, and so much more. Download it today, create a profile, and get connected. Well, I pray that you're blessed by this message and that you're releasing your faith to receive everything that God wants you to have, that you tap into the money flow. Let me pray for you today. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and those watching this broadcast. I speak your blessing upon them. I declare in the name of Jesus that anything that has tried to stop the flow of money and finances and wealth that you want to bring into their lives is rebuked right now. I declare in Jesus' name that there's a flow of prosperity that comes into their lives for their families, for their children, that debts are canceled, that you supernaturally show yourself strong as the God of all supply, as Jehovah Jireh, and as El Shaddai, the mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next week at the same time, keep listening for that still small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Sometimes you have to think about the relationships you're creating. It's not just about you. It's about multi-generation. God wants to bless you, he wants to bless your children, and you can't be so short-sighted to always get, be getting offended. You can't be so short-sighted to make things just about you when God's trying to set your family up for generational wealth and even generational connections because everything happens at the speed of relationship. Thank you for watching the Direction for Life broadcast. We'd also like to thank our Direction Connection partners who make this broadcast possible. Please consider partnering with us today. We would love for you to worship with us at any of our three locations. Log on to rdci.info to get connected.